Fulton is a non-profit, fan-based discussion and is owned by Toei Incorporated and Bandai. We claim no ownership to what we are discussing and is based on pure opinion. Hello everyone and welcome to the first iteration of The Science Of. My name is Marcus. And I'm Matthew and welcome back to the Toku Cast. Just gonna try to test out some different types of shows other than the reviews we were, which we will still release every other week. Mm-hmm. But just something else to give you guys and something else to do just for fun for us. Yeah. Uh, this first show, I believe, is, is Marcus's idea. It's called The Science Up. Mm-hmm. And why don't you discuss what we'll be doing? So in The Science Up, we're gonna be doing this one a little bit differently. We're gonna be talking about more of the backgrounds of the writers themselves, uh, any common themes that we might have, such as you know, cybernetics, uh, where they innovated their powers from, just things like that, and how they, you know, compare it to one another, and just how they end up transformed. And we'll do this for Super Sentai as well. Yep. Uh, everything will end up going, you know, in a straight line, more or less. A lot of things end up being fairly similar. Today we're mostly just doing uh, Common Riders 1 through Stronger. Through Stronger? Yep. Yeah. Uh, because most of their powers end up being sort of the same thing. Alright. And we'll, uh also be doing other shows as well. We're running a lot of ideas, so please tell us what you think in the comments, and if you like it, if you don't, and as always, follow us. We have a Facebook page now, mm-hmm. uh, facebook.com slash tokucast, yep. and we'll, um, I'll be posting just updates on what's going on, And but let's start with the science of. So we'll start with one. Yeah, we'll, let's go ahead and start with Comrade of One, uh, Hongo Takashi. So basically, well, Mostly for both him and Conrad or two. Because they're basically the same thing. They're basically the same thing. They're both cyborgs. And they're both into being made by Shocker. Uh, I mean, there's really not much really in the same by them. They were all given enhanced strength, uh, some minor flight capabilities. That Essentially mentioned. the Million Dollar Man. Essentially the Million Dollar Man, except for evil purposes. Uh, made by Shocker. And at the beginning of uh, the show, uh, at least for a humble topic sheet from what I've seen so far, he was basically kidnapped and taken and given these cybernetic implants to be as a worker for, well, as a soldier for a shocker. Right, and the original plan was to give them these enhancements and then brainwash them, but they realized what was going on before the brainwashing happened and escaped. Mm-hmm. So, we'll, we'll start with one and two since they're legitimately the same thing. And they're in the same show. <laughs> About the point. Uh, so with one and two, I believe that two in this case... Uh, he was also another member of Shocker, and in the first show, there were, like, Riders 3 through 8, I believe, near the end, right. where they were all basically just soldiers for Shocker. Um, and in that case, they actually denied control and ended up working. Uh, so, uh, the cybernetics, at least the cyborg implants, end up being their basis from sh- Stronger, to, uh, well, from 1 to 2 to D3 to... Rider Man, more or less, to X. And kind of implemented in Stronger. Yeah, and more or less implemented in Stronger. I mean, that cyborg thing was something they basically stuck through for those first couple of shows. Uh, pretty well. One thing they kind of, they didn't, they stuck with, at least through 1, 2, and V3, mm-hmm. is their belt, which I believe are wind power. Yep. Very green for one of somebody who wants to take a door when you think about it. I mean, yeah, but you know. So yeah, there's essentially green. a small wind turbine in the belt. Where in V3's case, there's two. Yeah, because he ends up combining yeah. the powers of yeah. one and two. So how? So we, let's start with. We've discussed where they're basically where they come from. Let's discuss that. Issue. The wind, the, the turbine catches the wind and spins, mm-hmm. generating energy, mm-hmm. which gives them a costume. Uh, well, you know, that's basically exactly how these shows end up working. Uh, they just end up getting that costume for basically no apparent reason. Shocker mostly use it as you know, something to tell, so everybody's part of this organization. In V3's case, however, he mostly went to this willingly. Uh, willingly is a loose word. He was dying and wanted to fight back and wanted to save his life. Mm-hmm. That's why he became a cyborg. A, a cyborg. Yeah. Uh, but these cyborgs basically all end up having the same base powers. Uh, they end up getting the strength boost. Speed uh, boost. Uh, they can think faster. Mm-hmm. They, I don't... Can, the first say, three end up having uh Would you sort say of they like, can see faster? See faster? Yeah. Don't you be farther? No. Oh, okay. They can see faster. They can process what they see. Oh, okay. Right. Is what that really means, but when you say see faster, it just sounds funny. Yeah. Uh, but... I guess I could also see farther. 
and is the least for the first three to end up being like minor flight capabilities. Uh, we'll put that one in quotations. They can jump. Well, no, because at the what the second episode of V three, you end up seeing uh, Rider one and two of the flying off the turtle bazooka up to the off into the ocean as he blows up. Uh, in the uh, Comrade of Batrider War Genesis, V three has a flying muffler which he can use to sort of glide through the air. Mm. Something that they don't end up exploring a lot in the show, but it's something that they do end up having in the actual game to show more of the twenty six powers. Uh, they end up going away from that. As we are getting along, of course, with Ryder Man, he's technically another cyborg, although it's just his arm in this case that ends up getting replaced. Yeah. Um, X dark. is also the same. I looked up a bit on his backstory. Uh, he was he was killed at the very beginning, and oh. then they built him. So he literally is the million dollar man. He literally is the million dollar man in this case, where he yeah. ends up dying, and they uh, God or God in this case ends up rebuilding him uh, with the enhancements and brings them back to life. Uh, for Amazon, however, that one seemed a bit more mythical than science Yes, I had to do the hand movement. Uh, just to show that they do end up having other things that they can't use with power bases. Uh, at least in that case. And then there's always the common tropes of hammer space, things like that. Mm-hmm. Which they'll never explain as opposed to a couple of like combustors, but yeah. Um, so that's the science of the belt, the science of their, um, essentially their base powers, the rider kick, a rider punch. Uh, well, yeah, that's more of a thing as well. Uh, and we'll bring stronger into this. We're watching the show at the moment. Uh, and of course, there's a sneak peek, it sucks. <laughs> we'll be reviewing that next week with Special Greg Jacob once again. Um, the rider kick, it's like all of their energy ends up getting absorbed into one spot in their body. Usually, a, a, usually some sort of appendage. Yeah, <laughs> usually. Um, I still the, want a rider head, but <laughs> usually, in the hate, in the case of V three, though, he has a lot of ways that he can get rid of people. Um, he ends up, he has his, like his own variations. On well, V three came with a lot more tools and tricks, and that's another thing most modern riders have done to get away from that one finisher and to these new basket of toys that they have. Ghost is big, big icon. I, boo. <laughs> I was gonna say big guilty party yeah. in this one, especially and also even worth dying. Yeah, We're but in, you don't end up doing a lot in that show. Uh, but you end up having like at least for the first five, it was basically always the rider kick with Amazon, and it was always like a front flip first for some reason. Yeah, and it's always a it's a it's uh, for it's always a jump kick for these riders. It's a jump. What would you say? Fifteen feet mm-hmm. into the air, down downward angle, um, Just long a, long kick. It's yeah. not like a quick you know, up kick. It is a long jump kick that mm-hmm. kind of propels them forward somehow. So what I think what kind of happens is that the energy is built up in that at least in the rider kicks case, mm-hmm. the energy is built up into the leg, and when they make the pose, it kind of maybe gets fogged. I wouldn't say one place. I wouldn't say fall more expelled. Backwards to kind of create a boost. Yeah. Because so if you've ever noticed, like especially like with O's, he jumps straight up and then just goes forward. Forward. Like the laws of physics do not matter. I mean, to be fair, this is a total to show. This is something that they're just going to end up playing. Yeah, I know. But in this sh- in this hypothetical show of how the that's works. mostly for the kick, though. The punch and is different. The punch is different because they all they basically always will end up jumping forward for the punch. But I think in the punch's case, the the Expelled energy mm-hmm. goes forwards instead of backwards. Yeah. So when it punches, it's more towards the enemy. Now, of course, we do end up having an exception to this rule because with Amazon, he doesn't really do a rider kick. No, he doesn't. He just beheads them. He has he, chop. Yeah, he do, he kind of focuses the energy into his fingers and kind of focuses it into a blade kind mm-hmm. of thing, kind of like Psylocke from the X Men. Yeah. Essentially, and then just. And then, of course, they do end up playing with that in Amazon where they do have actual blades. swords or blades and spears and good god. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. <laughs> they, they end up having a lot and just the way that their finishes end up working. I mean, end up working. We end up getting stats for a lot of the riders. As yes. Well. The, yeah. Like the, the wiki will show you how fast they can run, how much force they can lift, things like that. And that is going to be a big help with this show. The, the problem is that because of the first few riders... Don't do a lot that can be expected. Can 
be explained either by the fact that they're cyborgs or the fact that they have a super suit. So there really isn't a lot of science to discuss, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And not until we get to, like, Gaim, where you can get to Gaim and O's and... I mean, well, to be fair, you do have a lot of places where the power ends are coming from. As you said, like, 1, 2, and 3 all end up having wind power. Uh, I don't really know where Axis comes from. That's mostly just him being a cyborg. For Amazon's case, it's mostly just him being... In the... In the from the jungle. And from the armlet. In Stronger's case, however, his is coming from electricity. That's true. And with Amazon's case, I believe I've talked about this in our review, it's the armlet that gives him the power, mm-hmm. but it's the belt that kind of focuses it and controls it to make this suit, to focus this, ener- this energy into his fingers to do the chop. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of two things working, like with Drive and his wrist and belt. Yeah. And with Stronger, it's based off electricity. Let me ask you this. What gives Tackle her power? Same thing. They, they both end up coming from their powers a lot more from electricity. You know, Tackle has the electro toss. Right. Uh, that's useless. <laughs> but, well, it should. Yeah. But other than that, it's we'll try not to talk about Stronger too much. The, for the first couple of riders, this all ends up being the same thing. These are the cybernetics enhanced in various ways. We end up getting uh, you know, various power sources when whatever X is was, uh, Amazon's and electricity in Stronger's case. Um, of course, we can't end up really counting uh, Super One and Skyrider and Black and Black RX sort of end up being the same thing. But when we end up getting to those two, because it ends up being very different because their power is solar, uh, it's just very different. Again, yeah, very green. Yeah, as we end up getting further and further and further into the show, the power sources end up becoming extremely different. Uh, it's, it stops becoming a lot more static, like we do with uh, the cyborg enhancement. One thing to note, though, Comrade One is the only one to upgrade himself. Yes, in ter- like in, in, at least in terms of suit, he ends up getting a different suit and show where it's darker green, uh, and muscular. And a, no, that's just in one in show in the one in the movie that came out a few weeks ago. Of course, he ends up getting the one that's not really like a tank. And that's just something that is not the first one, even though technically. He is the first rider to get a power up, but it doesn't happen until much later. Up, much later, our first actual rider to get an actual power up in show is strong because he gets his charged up. Oh yeah, but other than that, um, that's really just a lot of the things that have happened with the first couple of riders, where everything is being pretty static. And we'll get and this will get much more with, with, into details, and we'll be discussing. How we think other things work with other writers, like how we think O's abilities work. Um, is like is Gaim's abilities technological or mythical? Because it can or a mixture of both. Because you can kind of argue either way. Yeah. But we'll get into those later. Marcus wants to stick with the shows that we've done thus far, mm-hmm. but we will be doing other shows where we talk more about modern seasons, just because modern seasons are what more are still more impression in your guys' heads, mm-hmm. and we want to give you things y'all no more about yeah so this is uh, episode one of the science of mm-hmm. and thank you for so much for watching thanks again guys bye bye